Hello and welcome back to Angleland. This is Frank and Kalen continuing our series on the history of Angleland. And today's story pertains to the year of history that uh, was from the time that I spent here and not from the family that previously lived here. And so my history goes back about 35 years to the late 80s. And the first spring that I had the place here on the lake, a friend of mine from college, who was, he was about 10 years younger than I was, but uh, we met at college. And he was from a little town in western North Dakota, and he was from a family of a bunch of boys. And they rarely went fishing because there weren't any lakes clear by, and, and the family was busy working most of the time, like most families are in those rural places, so they didn't have a lot of time to go fishing. So that first spring that I had the place here, he decided to come out on his golden birthday, which was May 26th, and he was 26 years old. And so we're here at the cabin, and he decides that he wants to go fishing because he'd never been fishing before and or seriously fishing anyway any so uh i we rigged up some fishing rods with just a jig on there and at the time all i had was a canoe that my parents had given me when i graduated from college it was a used canoe and that was my graduation present anyway i i told this guy ron is his name i said ron if you go up to the cabin and go to the front door where the doormat is and if you lift the floor mat up off the ground there there's a rubber floor mat and if you're real quick you can grab a night crawler before it goes back down the hole so he came up and he did that he pulled the the floor mat up and quickly caught a night crawler and he came down we had the canoe tied to the end of the dock Anyway, we cut the night crawler in half, and we each had a jig. We got in the canoe, and we set our lines in the water, and we pushed the canoe off the dock, and we let our lines down, and immediately we both got bites right away. And Ron had kind of an old, cheap, like, Zebco rod and reel with line that was probably 10, 15 years old. So, anyway, I pulled my line up and reeled it up and I had a great big sunny on a huge sunny and we kind of jokingly said well we're just going to do catch and release we're not going to keep anything so I threw it back and Ron's line was still down and a little bit of time went by and I said well what what's going on Ron and he goes well he said I got something and it's not coming up it won't come up from the bottom so I'm thinking he must have like a three or four pound northern that's wrapped in a bunch of weeds, which usually is what happens. Anyway, uh, I noticed that the fish was actually pulling the canoe around. We were actually moving. And my dad was here and, and uh, some other of my family members and some of the neighbors and some friends. So there was a number of people here that were all down on the dock because we just I think we just put the dock in and had put the canoe in and we were ready to go fishing anyway so these people were there that had helped put the dock in and stuff so they were watching this all happen from the dock and they're all kind of hollering oh what do you got what do you got and we, we don't know we don't know you know and it was pulling us around and i said well ron you're gonna have to do something pretty soon you're gonna have to either break the line or you know something because this can't go on forever so he just pulls as hard as he can and the rod, this old cheap rod is bent over and the Zebco is kind of creaking away and he's pulling it up and up comes the fish right next to me in the canoe and when I looked it looked like it was as big as about half of the canoe. It looked huge in the water and it was a great big walleye and I said, Ron, it's a great big walleye. Anyway, down it went again, pulling the drag on the Zepco, down it goes. 
So I said, if you can get it up one more time, I'll just, we didn't have a net in the canoe. I said, if you get it up, I'll just grab it and flop it into the canoe. So he could tell the wall I was, you know, getting tired. Anyway, he pulls it up, comes up one more time, and I grab onto it, and I put my hand right in its mouth and grab the tail. And I can see that where it's hooked, it's just barely hooked by just a thread in its lip. Anyway, I get it about halfway up to the canoe, and it flops in my hands and goes back in the lake. And the teeth from the mouth of the walleye where I grabbed it with my fingers were just shredded. Shredded all four of the fingers that I had in its mouth. Back down into the lake it went, and down it went. Anyway, my hands started bleeding pretty profusely and dripping into the, there was a little bit of water in the bottom of the canoe because it leaked a little bit. Anyway, so this, I'm dripping the blood into the water. I looked at Ron and I said, if you can get it up one more time, I'll try grabbing it again. So it's pulling us around and, you know, probably 20 minutes at least has gone by. All the people are on the dock standing there watching us. You know, and we'll talk, what is it, what is it, you know, it's, it's a great big walleye. Anyway, he gets it back up, and I grab onto it, and I flip it into the canoe, and in it, and it flops into the bottom of the canoe. Here it's a great big, and it turned out to be nine-pound walleye. So we frantically roll back to the dock, and we get back to the dock, and my dad is standing there, and he sees my hand bleeding, and he sees where all the blood had dripped into the water in the bottom of the canoe and he thought it was all blood and he said oh my god we got to get you to the emergency room he said you're bleeding to death I said no no dad it's it's not all blood it's blood dripping into the water so we got the walleye up onto the dock and we all walked up and we all looked at it and we're like well what should we do should we release it and we decided no let's keep it and we'll have it mounted because it's Ron's 26th birthday. It's the golden walleye, birthday walleye. So we wrapped it in newspaper and, and put it in the freezer. And everyone there chipped in 15 bucks. And it was enough to pay the, the fee for mounting the walleye. So it's been on the wall of the cabin now 30-some years. And, and that's the golden birthday walleye story.